Greetings. Hi, I'm Dr. Walter Jacobson, a board certified psychiatrist. Today I saw a, uh, an interview, a segment of an interview between uh, Michelle Obama and Oprah Winfrey, where Michelle Obama said that, I quote, hope is dead. Okay, first of all, that's not true. Hope is never dead. But even if she believes hope is dead, why would she say that? to all of the people, all of her supporters, all of Hillary Clinton supporters and Obama supporters and Bernie supporters, people who are desperately frightened, terrified about the future. What point is that? What, what value is that? How does that help anybody? Basically, what she's saying, uh, yeah, you might as well go kill yourself now and save yourself uh, the, the pain and torture because it's hopeless. There's no chance anything will ever get better. Uh, we're doomed. Hmm, let me see. We live in a democracy and we're going to have another election in four years. So uh, even if Donald Trump does a, a lot of damage, uh, uh, hey, uh, it, it can always be reversed. Well, maybe not always, but point being, hope is never dead. That's just a horrible lie. Uh, and uh, talk about demagoguery. That's just a horrible thing to say, uh, uh, you know, and it's, and, and it's wrong. And hope is never dead as long as we live and breathe. And I don't speak, uh, I, I, I speak from the knowledge of a man named Viktor Frankl, who was a Jewish psychiatrist and a Holocaust survivor. And he was in a Nazi prison camp for three years. And he wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning, the chilling yet inspirational story of Viktor Frankl's struggle to hold on to hope during his three years as a prisoner in Nazi concentration camps. So, uh, yeah, she has a lot of nerve to come out and say hope is dead. First of all, it certainly is not dead for half the country who voted for Donald Trump. It's not dead for the, you know, the workers at Carrier who, uh, who are going to have jobs where they uh, weren't going to have jobs before uh, Donald Trump picked up the phone and, uh, and with uh, Pence's help uh, made uh, that Carrier a decision to keep jobs here in America happen. Uh, hope uh, for those people isn't dead, and and it shouldn't be dead for uh, Hillary Clinton supporters. Uh, that would make people complacent. That would make people morose. That would make people give up and do nothing to effect future change. Yeah, we need. You know, if you feel uh, that, uh, yeah, the doom and gloom of a Trump presidency, then. You can't give up hope. You must uh, muster all your strength and courage and, uh, and passion and, uh, and use the political system, the democratic system. Contact your uh, representatives, your senators, uh, so that they keep an eye on Trump and, you know, and, and try to keep him honest and keep him fair and, and keep him just you know, and, and mobilize energy and efforts towards the next election in four years. It's never hopeless. There's always hope. And let me add, by the way, that if you're a Trump supporter and you're feeling hopeful and happy about Trump, you still need to keep your eyes open and you still need to put pressure on representatives to make sure that he does the right thing because uh, he's capable of flipping one way or another. He's capable of doing some very extreme things that, that, uh, that he may think is good, but turns out to be bad. We, we all have to pay attention. We all have to think you know, and we all have to be really careful about trusting what government officials say and what our favorite media pundits say and our favorite uh, political experts say. Uh, across the board, left or right, we got to pay attention. We got to like look for the facts and not let our fears and our prejudices, our biases uh, influence us to glom on to something that's not true. Okay. We are pawns, uh, for the most part, in uh, a lot of uh, things going on here in the world today, and we need to think for ourselves. We cannot have a rush to judgment, and above all else, hope is never dead. Thank you. Peace be with you.